today's video, we're going to go ahead and take a look at how to stack cameras up to achieve certain visual effects. In this scene, I'm going to go ahead and have a 3D GUI system on top of our actual game view. So I've got our main camera set up. That's the one that comes with Unity. And of course, it just sits there while everything else moves around on the screen. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and child that to our ball. And now when we go ahead and move around, it'll follow us. Great. Now I've gone ahead and set a mini map up. This is the exact same as we had in the, the last example where we actually went ahead and set a mini map up. I'll throw a link down in the description if you didn't see, see that video. But if we take a look and as we move around, the, the mini map just updates. I have the mini map camera set up right here. It's just a child of the sphere and it works just like it did in the other video. I'm going to go ahead and turn the scene off in the, well, the, uh, sorry, the skybox off in the scene, just so we can actually see the full strums of the cameras. There we go. We see them a bit better now. All right, so let's go ahead and set up a camera for our GUI. So I'm going to come in, right click, create a new camera. I'll change it, the name to GUI camera. And I'm going to get rid of the audio listener as we already have it on the main camera, and that's the one we want it to have it. So I'm going to go ahead and set this position off somewhere in the distance. And I already know that I want it 1000 units above the ground. And because of the way I've positioned it, I've already gone ahead and positioned that mini map and a rotating cube that we're going to use as a GUI element. So that when we click on it, it just has particle effects that come off of our sphere. So the two things we're going to look at today are depth and also clear flags, mostly just the clear flags. So as we explained a bit in our last video where we did the mini map, when you have multiple cameras in your scene, whatever has the lowest depth value is drawn first and everything else is drawn on top of it. So our main camera has a value of negative one. And if we go ahead and take a look at our new camera we have, it has a value of zero. So if we go to negative two, that puts it behind this one. So it's completely rendered and then this one's put on top of it. That's not what we really want though. We want the GUI to be put on top of it. So we just need a value greater than negative one. If you do negative one, uh, it's kind of a crapshoot really, I think just on which one's gonna render first. But what I do for my GUI stuff, I always just put it on 10. That gives me tons of different layers in between if for instance, I have to put something else in between there. So it's on top, but we still can't see our game view. And that has to do with the clear flags. So let's go ahead, we'll take a look at that. Now, if we take a look at this little pyramid out in front of our camera, that's everything that camera can see and is gonna render. And it's not quite a pyramid. We zoom in really close to the top. See how it's cut off? Uh, this has to do with the clipping planes, which we'll look at in the next video on the camera system. But it's pretty much a pyramid. Um, until you get to the orthogonal, then it's a box. But again, next video. So every camera is going to keep track of all the colors and the depth of everything it renders. And anything that is not being rendered, it's going to replace with something. And this is where your clear flags come in. So in this instance, we're replacing everything that's not being rendered. So everything besides our mini map and our cube, it's going to be replaced with the skybox. We can go ahead and switch out over to solid color which now replaces it all with the solid color and take a look here, the color, you can change it right here if you wanted. Uh, the next one is don't clear. And this one here will not clear anything. And if we go ahead and start it up from frame to frame, the only thing that's gonna be updated is, well, what happened between this frame and last frame. So we can't see the rotating cube. This is actually look a little bit clearer. I think if we do it on the main camera, I'll switch this to don't clear and everything's going to get smudgy and all smeared. You generally only use this mode if you're going to go ahead and have your shader. Maybe you're running a custom shader. If you want it to handle all the clearing, I'm going to go ahead and switch the main one back to the skybox. We'll come back to our GUI camera. And what I'm going to switch this to is depth first, or sorry, depth only. And you use this one quite a bit. You'll see this in games where if you want something not to clip through your walls, let's say your character has a gun and as you're turning around, you see the tip of the gun going through the wall. 
You could set a camera up to render only the gun or particular elements that you don't want to clip through a wall. How about have a, a higher camera value for its depth than your scenery? And it'll always be rendered on top of that scenery so it won't clip through. But I do the exact same thing with my UI elements. So now when I go ahead and start it, it's on top, there's no smearing, we can see everything. I can interact with my UI elements. So let's keep clicking. There we go. And one thing I also like to do as far as the UI goes is to actually tag it. So I'm going to take that cube and my mini map and not tag it. Sorry, put it on a separate layer, UI layer. Then on my UI camera, make sure that I'm calling everything except the UI layer, just so it doesn't have to worry about trying to render anything else. I don't have anything else up here, but it's just something I like to set up. Now keep in mind, you only get 32 layers. Unity uses the first eight, so don't go too crazy about it. Uh, but there we go, we've got our UI stacked on top of our scene view. Uh, you can add 3D elements to it. You can have multiple stacked layers of UI. And I wouldn't go too, too crazy, but you'll see a lot of games that start getting more complex, having you know two, three, maybe a couple more, up to five cameras. Woo. <laughs> But anyway, that's how you can stack cameras, and in this case, the UI, and keep it out of the way. Well, one other thing I usually like to do is go ahead and create an empty. And I'm going to put it at 0, 0, 0. And I usually like to take all my UI elements and put them all under it. And just call this GUI. That way there, I can move them all. If for some reason, I need to go ahead and move it to a different place. I can, and I don't have to move each one individually. I used to move them underneath the camera itself, and you can do that. I just I like the idea of having an empty there. But again, there you go, camera stacking. What'd you think of it? What are you gonna make with it? Just give you any ideas. Let me know down below in the comments, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. So if you liked the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You're a pretty chatty guy over there. When I'm not walking through a forest, or being stalked by eagles and falcons. Lions, tigers, and bears. <laughs>